not one, but two NPM supply chain attacks in just one week. Headlines screamed, massive compromise and millions at risk. But what actually happened? Let's find out today in Thread Talks The Deep Dive. Let's get onto it. Welcome to Thread Talks. Let's delve deep into the dynamic world of cybersecurity. So with me today is Yuri Witt, one of our SOC analysts. So uh, welcome, welcome back, Yuri, I would say. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. And uh, my name is Rob Maas, field CTO at Ontwit. Um, so um, maybe we lost already some listeners in the beginning with uh, the term NPM. So let's start at the, at the beginning. What means NPM? What is it? So NPM, it stands for the Node.js Package Manager. Uh, so it's literally a manager for packages and libraries for Node.js. Node.js is in turn a framework used for JavaScript applications. So it's a lot of pre-built uh, API calls and functionality. So it's a lot easier to start off with your JavaScript-based applications. Yeah, so the idea is if I want to create or build an application and I choose the Node.js as a framework, I can include all kinds of Node.js packages to quickly speed up my application development. So I don't have to create my own, for example, login mechanism. It's exactly. just a package. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there was not only one, but two attacks in one week on this in, on this subsystem or this package system. Mm -hmm. uh, and the first one was called uh, a crypto drainer. Can you explain, first of all, what, what is a crypto drainer and then what happened? Yeah, so when we're talking about a crypto drainer, we're usually talking about malware that can steal your cryptocurrency via various methods. Now, uh, the most obvious uh, ver uh, or sample of a crypto drainer would be one that ch steals your private key for your wallet and then just steals all your money. Uh, but what we saw in this case is the uh, uh, actual malware in the affected NPM packages uh, was listening for cryptocurrency transactions. So it would use uh, an application like MetaMask, which is a wallet application to handle your cryptocurrency wallets. It would then listen for transactions happening uh, 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 for that wallet, and it would then change the destination address uh, to one owned by the attacker via, via randomly generated measure. Um, so instead of you trying to send cryptocurrency to Alice, it would be sent to North Korea instead, for example. Yeah, but I still yeah. think I'm sending it to Alice. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, and this, this attack, um, uh, gained a lot of attention, uh, at least on social media platforms. We'll come to that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it was also, uh, quickly taken down. Yeah, so the initial compromise happened because uh, a maintainer of uh, quite a few popular packages in the NPM registry uh, was fished for uh, uh, their account credentials and a, a, a TOTP code, so 2FA. Uh, so full account compromised, and then the attackers were able to put their own code uh, into the packages that this person maintained. Uh, and sent them out into the world, ready to be downloaded by other people. But it was very quickly mitigated. After about two hours, the attacker was already aware, or sorry, the victim was already aware of the compromise and uh, 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 mitigated the the issue, uh, reset the credentials, and then also delisted the infected packages for package versions. Yeah, so the, the infected packages were only out there for uh, a few hours. Yeah. Two, I believe you said two. Um, that also hopefully means that the attacker did not gain a lot of money. Is that also the case? Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, a good thing about cryptocurrency is, is that it's very transparent, so you can see uh, uh, transactions that were made. Now, uh, the specific method that the uh, malware, or I guess the, the malicious code used to uh, um, redirect those transactions used a uh, uh, almost a random number generator to determine to which addresses it should be sending uh, the money. So we don't have a clear overview of all the target addresses for the transactions. Uh, there are a couple that are known and marked as malicious. And from that, we don't really see a whole lot of money. Like uh, most sources, uh, they estimate about 2,000, 3,000 USD to be collected from this attack, uh, which considering the amount of potential impact was very low. Okay. Um, so. This, this was the first one. It got a lot of media attention. But in the same week, another attack happened, uh, which was called uh, Shada Halut uh, Worm. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, please explain. Why yeah. the name and what does it do? <laughs> so, uh, 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 well, it, 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 the, the term Shai Halut was actually determined by the attacker. 
uh, uh, it is because the, the this malware actually harvested credentials. It would search the local file system for various types of credentials for GitHub, AWS, Azure, uh, uh, Google Cloud, as well uh, as well as NPM credentials. Uh, it would then format all those credentials in uh, JSON, so nicely uh, uh, formatted uh, text, easy to process uh, by a computer program, and it would then paste that data in a public, new public GitHub repository called Shaihulud under the user that was compromised. Yeah, so uh, so that's where it gave the, the name. In the GitHub of the victim. Yeah, okay. exactly. Uh, uh, and yeah, uh, it, it, it fits as well because this was an actual worm that was able to spread itself over other NPM packages. Uh, so I guess the attacker was just very clever. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I think this is quite interesting because a worm within uh, a packaging system, uh, we don't see them often. Uh, and this means that, uh, potentially this, this attack or this worm could easily spread and uh, end up with a bit a big reach of infected uh, npm packages exactly yeah um so it, it harvests all the credentials it put it into a github repository of the victim itself mm -hmm. uh, and that repository was called shahalud yeah. so that's was where the name was coming from yeah okay i think the uh the interesting part here is well of course the the attack itself was interesting uh, but maybe more interesting is how people reacted to these two attacks in uh, one week. Mm -hmm. uh, can, you, can you explain a bit how the community or social media reacted to these attacks? Yeah, so for the first crypto drainer, uh, uh, now, regardless of whether or not the impact was actually big or not, uh, uh, what basically everybody copy and pasted on LinkedIn and Twitter is that billions of weekly downloads, everybody is affected, massive compromise. Uh, what they actually meant by that is that the packages which were infected with the crypto drainer uh, on NPM, uh, NPM will host uh, statistics about how many times packages are downloaded. So they have weekly download statistics and they basically just added up all the weekly download statistics of all the affected packages. And then they got to the huge 2.6 billion uh, 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 weekly downloads affected uh, number that was just thrown away everywhere uh, uh, while in fact uh, the amount of times that the infected packages were actually downloaded and installed within that two hour time span of actually there being risk is not 2.6 billion that's, no, that's really, really small yeah. Uh, yeah but everybody took that number and then screamed it off the rooftops and so the entirety of, of cybersecurity linkedin was basically a firestorm for the entire week but then the shai halut attack started uh, it was reported on and either it was due to fatigue or or people just don't didn't understand it, but there was a, a lot less media attention on the Shaolud attack, even though that one was actually critical and with high impact and 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 uh, widespread. Yeah, yeah, I believe uh, that's if you do a GitHub research uh, search today, that you still find a lot of uh, repositories belonging to Shaolud. Yeah, yeah, multiple sources have have listed that there were. At its peak, like hundreds of public Shahulut repositories with those leaked credentials. Uh, uh, today, if you if you do a search, there are other repositories that just have Shahulut in the name, uh, but there are still occurrences of those actual leaked credential uh, repositories out there, and it still reads uh, at about a hundred of those repositories. Yeah, so we can fair, we can assume, or no, not assume, we can just state that uh, Shahulut really has a much larger impact than the crypto drain uh, attack. Definitely, most definitely. So that, that makes it a bit strange that people just went out uh, full-blown on the uh, the first attack, the crypto yeah. drain, and that the second one did not get at least not much attention. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, when we're looking at defending against these kinds of supply chain attacks on the NPM packages, um, it's mainly something I think developers should do or companies that develop software, mm -hmm. well, what can they do to prevent these attacks? Uh, well, there are two very strong security measures that you can take against this. Now, the first one should be pretty obvious. It's the monitoring of your uh, project dependencies. So uh, if you have your internal development team and they have their own development ecosystem, that would require uh, uh, most likely a list of uh, uh, dependent uh, uh, dependencies for your project that it needs mm -hmm. to run on. Uh, and it's very important to monitor those those dependencies, not just update them 
whenever you want, uh, uh, update them whenever it's clear that they pose no security risk. Uh, 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 because if you have something like auto update turned on for all your project dependencies, you would have probably been af affected by uh, either of these attacks. Well, if you uh, take a more uh, reactive stance for your uh, dependency updates, uh, uh, you could have seen very quickly, oh, hey, these packages are bad. Let's not update until the security issue is resolved. Yeah, but it also means that if you want to update your packages, or even if you have packages in use, you should monitor for uh, vulnerabilities that happen in other packages that you might be using. Definitely, yeah. And yep. that's... Uh, Sounds easy, but uh, <laughs> it's quite a hard job, in, I, in uh, practice, I imagine. It's, uh, yeah. yeah, in practice, it's very hard. And then the other uh, more specific defensive strategy that you can take uh, against the Shai Hulut worm mm -hmm. specifically is to monitor your CICD pipelines very carefully uh, uh, and alert on uh, the creation of new unapproved CICD workflows. Uh, that was one of the strategies that the worm used uh, is it would gain persistent access to those credentials uh, by setting up a new branch under the compromised repository, so not the new repository that the malware would make, but under the actual uh, compromised repository, it would create a new branch, also called Shai Hulut. It would create a workflow in there uh, that triggers on push actions, and then on each push action towards the repository, it would uh, again post that JSON payload uh, uh, towards a webhook uh, uh, owned by the attacker. So basically uh, what that means is that whenever you would throw new code into your repository, that uh, uh, workflow would trigger and it would send out the same data that it had already gathered again to the attacker, meaning that even if the publicly created repository was taken down, the attacker would still receive those credentials again. Yeah, because the, the full JSON with all the credentials were sent uh, with that webhook to the attacker again, so we get all the... Uh... Yes. Okay. Uh, you also mentioned uh, in order to, uh, especially with the, the first attack, in order to uh, change these NPM packages or put your malicious code in there, you need the credentials, of course. Yeah. Uh, is there something we can do? Uh, definitely. It's make sure that you uh, protect your secrets and your credentials. Now, the crypto drainer, that was unfortunate. Uh, the maintainer of those popular packages got fished can happen to anyone. Uh, luckily, uh, they were very quick to uh, act on it. Uh, uh, but yeah, of course, uh, still monitoring for suspicious sign-ins, uh, user behavior, user login behavior specifically, can always help to protect against mm -hmm. these attacks. Uh, but for the Shai Hulut worm, uh, because it specifically went after uh, commonly used credentials, uh, so access tokens for your cloud services, uh, access tokens for your Git, or your NPM account, uh, uh, protecting those credentials and those secrets uh, uh, is very important. Yeah, and I can imagine it would also help if you can ro rotate them frequently. Definitely. Uh, even automatically, maybe. Yeah. Um, another interesting thing you mentioned when we were preparing this talk is uh, Shahulut on the systems it is running on. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's also a good uh, protection to use a different system. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, uh, so Shaolut, the, the worm has, uh, uh, the, the first thing that it does, it will do uh, an OS check to see on what operating system it's, it's, it's being run on. Uh, and it would immediately just quit out if it's running on Windows. So it's specifically targeting uh, Linux and macOS devices, which makes sense because one of the, uh, I guess, most popular methods of, of searching for credentials is to monitor uh, uh, environment variables. Uh, so the the runtime variables that programs can use uh, with data in them, they're often used for credentials uh, and for access tokens and API tokens. Uh, and Windows doesn't really have a, a, a good measure that isn't as quiet as on Linux to retrieve all those uh, environment variables. Um, but you can't really not develop <laughs> on Linux or macOS. It's pretty integral. Uh, but I, I, I guess you could, to protect specifically against Shai Hulut, <laughs> you could start Turn developing your yeah. JavaScript applications on Windows. <laughs> okay. Um, so maybe uh, we, we did not mention it. It's really for developers to protect yourself. But is there something I can do as an end user as well? Because in the end, I want to use an application and I will download maybe also an NPM package. Uh, is something that I can do? Apart <coughs> from also protecting your own credentials, there isn't much that you can do. This was uh, uh, very specifically targeting maintainers of uh, popular NPM packages, 
one of the, uh, the 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 fact that it was called a worm is because the uh, 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 malicious code for Shai Hulud was actually uh, uh, searching for your NPM authentication tokens, yeah. if there are any, and it would use them to inject itself into uh, uh, the top 20 uh, most downloaded packages that your account also maintains. Uh, okay. So um, uh, it, it, it was mostly targeted towards actual developers uh, that have maintainer rights on NPM packages. Uh, as an end user, there's much you can do because you can't really disallow specific versions of or specific dependencies. They're just built into the project or the applications that you use. Uh, maybe uh, more in general, so not to the specific to those two uh, NPM attacks. I can imagine that an EDR or XDR solution might help in general if you run software, uh, at least to detect uh, abnormal behavior. Definitely, yeah. If if a dependency is infected and it suddenly starts sending a whole lot of uh, uh, um, uh, collected data towards uh, an attacker-owned system or C2 server, that is something that uh, a good firewall configuration uh, and EDR would be able to prevent, yeah, okay. or at least detect. Yeah, it's maybe less uh, applicable to these two uh, attacks, uh, but there's something you can do. Uh, I think that brings us to uh, not one, but two conclusions. Um, the first one uh, is more to the uh, developers and uh, the uh, uh, organizations that develop code. Is uh, make, make sure that you monitor all your packages, that you know what processes you have in place, monitor your credential and the usage of credentials, uh, especially for these two attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second one I think is really interesting is the, the media coverage that you see that there are two attacks on the same system in, in one week and uh, where the first... Uh, one gained a lot of media attention, but didn't do well. It did do a bit of harm, but didn't do much. Yeah. And the second one, we didn't gain well l at least less attention. Did it do? Uh, did had potentially uh, had the potential to do a lot of harm uh, and a lot of uh, spread, mm -hmm. uh, and still uh, is probably active uh, since we see the uh, GitHub rep uh, repositories. Yeah. Yeah, uh, do your own research. Uh, uh, it sounds very basic, but uh, don't believe everything that you read on LinkedIn, specifically everything that you read on LinkedIn. Uh, uh, but it, I mean, if you do see a lot of posts regarding the same thing screaming from the rooftops, it's important to look into it, but uh, make sure that your initial investigation uh, is what you find the most important. Uh, so come to your own conclusions yeah, and don't just uh, regurgitate facts that you see on social media yeah, use reputable uh, sources uh and do your own uh, do your own research yeah. okay well uh thank you uh yuri thank you as well and uh, thank you listeners um i hope to see you next time i hope you learned something and if you didn't already do it please like and subscribe and see you next time see you next time thank you for listening to thread talks a podcast by onto it Cybersecurity and m6 did you like what you heard do you want to learn more follow thread talks to stay up to date on the topic of cybersecurity. 